So today I'm going to be taking you through how you can put a 3D hologram display inside your gaming PC. I got this from Amazon for about £20 or maybe $25 and uh, yeah it just came through and I believe this is the perfect size to fill up a space for a 120mm fan. So this should be fairly easy to do for anyone to do but I'll say that now before actually doing it. First of all, what you don't want is this USB cable sticking out the side of your PC case. So if you've got an old PC case that you've kind of don't use anymore, take it apart, take the front panel apart and you can salvage the USB ports from the header and that way the connector on the end you can use um, and plug it directly into the motherboard and have two USB ports inside the PC case itself. Next up I'll show you how to mount this and the first thing I really want to do is take this plastic casing off and I'm going to unscrew these two screws here and mount it inside. So before I carry on with the video here's a quick word from our sponsor. Computer problems can be frustrating and disruptive to your life or business. That's why you need PC Surgeon. The PC Surgeon is a team of skilled technicians with many years of experience and knowledge with all kinds of devices and software. They go above and beyond to help their customers and can help always find a solution to the most bizarre problems. They support, fix and repair most Windows, Apple, Linux and Android devices and offer their services to both home and business users. Whether you need help with software installation, data recovery, virus removal or any other computer issue, they can help. They might be based in North London, UK, but with the power of the internet, they can help anyone over the phone or WhatsApp, remote and online. The PC Surgeon pride themselves on providing cutting edge services, great customer satisfaction and value. So the next time you experience a computer problem, call the PC Surgeon and they'll have you up and running in no time. There we have it, it's out. So that was a lot easier than I thought and I'm quite pleased to see this is actually USB-C. So um, I'm actually not gonna use this white cable here because it doesn't really match with the theme of my case so I'm going to get a black one and then I'm going to install it inside the new PC. Now you want to make sure when you're doing this that you position this and spin this round and just make sure that at the end of it is not making any contact with anything so you just have it in the right position without hitting anything while you spin it around. Once you're happy with its position you can screw it down. With that simple USB connection, you can do a bit of a cable tidy up. You can see, it looks pretty awesome. I mean, for such a simple thing to put in, it's a, it's a great idea. I'm just gonna play around with different images and different things that you can upload. Of course, I'm gonna get rid of all this dinosaur and Christmas stuff and put something pretty cool in here and just uh, see what happens. But just to note, of course, in the video you can see it flickering quite a lot, but in actual real life it looks pretty steady. It looks a lot better than it does in a video. So after using that link it turned up nothing and I found out that you can just take the SD card out from the back of the fan and I'll show you that in a minute. And you basically just put that in a memory card that they give you and then when you load up that USB it would then give you the software. And if you want to um, convert a file, so here I've downloaded an MP4. Don't ask me where I got it from, but basically it's just a short video of Manchester United. And what you can do is you can then select the file. Any MP4 I think works, and then you just click export. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it again. And I've exported it back to the USB, so it should add it as a bin file which is down here as you can see and just make sure when you're converting the videos that you choose the right model type my one's an f mini 11 and how did i know that well if you just have a look at the box it will tell you on the side somewhere so if i have a look here uh, it's somewhere there it is just on the top right there mini 11 so just make sure you choose that, otherwise it won't encode it properly. Um, 
hopefully this works. And if you're looking for the flash card, it's actually located on the back here, on the back of the fan. So I'm just going to pop that back in if I can. And there you go. It seems to have worked pretty well if you ask me. And uh, task complete. I think actually that's come out really well, even though it's got a green screen on the back. It still looks pretty good in my opinion and uh, it's encoded it really well so a lot easier than I thought it would be although it did take a bit of figuring out and actually knowing that the uh, there was an SD card in there and how to convert the videos and once you know how to do it it's really straightforward. So it's all well and good trying to fit a small fan but what about a much larger fan? This one comes in at around about 42 and a half centimeters and I'm going to try and fit it into this case. Now you might have seen Linus Tech Tips put multiple monitors into his case, but I think actually maybe this might be an easier option. The reason for that is you only have one power cable, and that power cable is a fairly standard size, which shouldn't be too bad to fit in, as you can see there. So I'm going to see if I can make a mount and put this in and see what it looks like. So just find a random piece of aluminium laying around your house. Uh, the reason why I chose this material is because it's fairly easy to work with and easy to bend. I use a center punch to punch out a pilot hole and in that hole I'm going to tap it with a tap and die set. This kit is super useful if you want to run threads into other bits of materials and in that hole I'm going to be using an M4 screw so that I don't need any other fixings like nuts or anything like that. The reason for that is because the fan will vibrate somewhat and I just don't want things just coming apart as that fan is spinning. So of course I had to drill some precious holes into my case which I really didn't want to do but it's a necessity so that I can actually mount the bracket. I also then started bending the bracket so then I can get a bit of a U shape on the aluminium bracket and I used some rubber washers that I've 3D printed for another project to try and minimize some of the vibration noise, which actually worked pretty well. It was still loud, but not too bad. The fan was really unbalanced. You know, it was vibrating like crazy. So I thought I'd use electrical tape to add a bit of weight onto the end of the fan and to reduce the level of vibration. And it actually worked surprisingly well, even if it is a bit janky, if I say so myself. Now testing it and turning it on, making sure there wasn't too much vibration and it works pretty good on the mount. It's just a different story when it's mounted into the actual case itself. I don't know if it's actually going to hit anything or not, but luckily I didn't need to take anything out and it mounted in there surprisingly very well. I couldn't put the glass cover on. I think with a few more adjustments, I think I could probably make it work. Um, but of course, if you're mounting a huge fan on the front of your case, a quick key question is temps. And actually, it was a lot cooler from a GPU standpoint, which you're seeing now. And from a CPU standpoint that you saw a minute ago, there was about a five degree difference for GPU and about two to three degrees on the CPU, not a huge amount. But I do reckon if I turn the fans around on my AO cooler, I think that difference could be much larger. And that's it. Job done. It's fairly easy to do and I think that looks pretty incredible. A bit loud though. But anyways, hope you liked the video and I'll see you in the next one.